Last time on our template mini series, we discussed creating a template and getting it to work in Visual Studio. Now we're going to talk about how you can continue expanding on that by adding parameters. So learn more on this episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and I'm joined once again by senior PM Syed Hashimi. Welcome back. Hello, great to be here. Thank you. Yep, long time to see. So in the last episode, we talked about creating a template and then getting it to work within Visual Studio. So what are we going to talk about today? Yeah, that's right. So today we're going to we're we're going to talk about, you know, how can I take an existing template uh, and add, you know, one or two parameters to that and then we'll see uh, how that works in Visual Studio as well. All right. Well, uh, I'd love to just dive right in because I'm sure everyone wants templates that go beyond just the hello world type setup, right? There's no doubt about it. All right, so let's go Let's go ahead and jump right into it here. So I've got my uh, GitHub open here, and uh, a reminder for how to get to this repository is aka.ms slash netcore templates. Let me basically just kind of show what we're going to do here. So let me go into the to the my command here. And inside the template.json file is where we're going to start adding these parameters. So everything that I'm going to do here today uh, is basically just right here inside this, uh, inside these files here. I'm just going to snap it here. Let me open up my, uh, let me open up the, the demo solution here that's got the templates and all that sort of stuff. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open up my template.json file here. And here's where we're going to go ahead and start adding some parameters here. Um, and by the way, the the first parameter that there's a very kind of special parameter here, and that's for framework. So, what's the target framework for this project? And uh, you know, it's important to add this for a number of reasons. One, um, whenever you have parameters inside of a project, and if you want those parameters to appear in Visual Studio, uh, the framework parameter always has to be uh, it always has to be declared there, and uh, and it's also good for users just so that way they know, you know, what uh, what target framework is going to be used here to create, uh, is going to be used uh, when they create a project there. So let me just go ahead and copy this content from here, and then um, and then we'll we'll kind of just dis describe uh, more about this. So symbols. I'm going to paste that in. Let me uh, double check my project here real quick. So if I go take a look at my CS proj, I can see the target framework is actually net5. Go ahead and take that, and, and then we'll go ahead and fix this. So instead of the choice being net core app 3.1, it should be net5, and target net5, and then the same for these replacements here. All right, so this is basically uh, it's called a choice parameter that has one choice. So it's like a drop down with with one particular value there. All right, so now let's also go back and take a look at what can we do for other parameters here. So in the code, uh, the the demo kind of project had an author name uh, somewhere inside the code, and then there was a replacement that was happening for that. So let's go and add. Let's go and add something like that to the code that we have here. So let me just go and grab author name, author name here. You could say created by author name, period. All right, so now what's going to happen is I'm going to create a parameter that users can uh, specify a new value by who this has been created by, right? And mm -hmm. you know what I'll do is let me take this and maybe we'll put it into... Is there, you know what I'll do is I'm actually just going to put this inside my... Um, inside my project file as well, maybe like you know as a comment or something. All right, there we go. Great. All right, so now what I'll do is let's go back to the template.json. We're going to go ahead and add the the new parameter here. Author name. Uh, the type here is parameter. And uh, you notice I'm just kind of intelligencing my way through all this stuff, right? Yeah, it must be super helpful. Mm -hmm. Not having to remember every single piece of syntax. Yeah, it's very difficult to remember all these things, you know? Absolutely. So I, so I just specified a default value. So um, when this template gets instantiated, you know, either from, or actually when this template gets used from .NET New, 
if that parameter is not specified, this default value will be used. And then that will be the default value in Visual Studio that gets kind of plugged in there as well. Cool. So if you put author name anywhere else within this template, it would also pick up on the schema or this uh, role would be applied to every instance? That's right, that's right, that's right. Also file names as well. So if you got a file that's called, you know, author name, blah, 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 then author name part of that would get uh, would get modified to whatever the user specified here. Cool. And uh, there, there's also cleanup that happens too. Uh, let's say for example, uh, you let's say for example, the user specifies some value that can't be used in a file name. <clears throat> the template engine will, will basically take care of fixing that up to where it would be a valid file name there. All right. <clears throat> Sorry. So now I've added uh, two parameters here. We've got the framework parameter that's a, a choice, and it's just got one choice for .NET 5. We also got the author name parameter, and the default is author demo, and it's a text. Let's go ahead and uh, reinstall. We'll, we're going to do uh, pretty much everything here. So I'll say reset templates, and then I'll do a semicolon, and I'm just going to copy the, the additional uh, commands here so we can just do everything in kind of one go here and, and also with the correct order here. All right. What I did was I just combined those three commands with a semicolon. So this will run, and then this will run, and then this will run. All right, we can see it reset the template, uh, and then it created the NuGet package, and then it installed the NuGet package. And then we can see our, we can see it's here. So if I were to do .NET new Syed con dash h, I should see those new parameters here. I see I've got author name here. Framework doesn't uh, automatically appear here because because it's it's like um, there's just one value there I think and I'm, I'm I'm really not sure why framework doesn't show up here I think it probably should this is probably a bug I'll I'll kind of talk to the team about that mm -hmm. so now I just reinstalled that template so I have to uh, close Visual Studio and then reopen it so that way Visual Studio gets kind of you know the latest definition of that let me go into create a new project and if all goes well we should see. Uh, in the additional info page, those those parameters that we have defined here. All right, so now I see, oh yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. Okay, so yeah, I see the target framework, but I don't see my author name parameter. So there's actually an additional step that needs to happen here. Let me open up that, uh, that solution. So demo.solution. So that's another thing that I forgot to mention here. Uh, framework parameter, you know, that one's kind of special case. Then if you've got the framework parameter in your template.json, it will just appear in Visual Studio itself. Uh, but for the other parameters, you know, in Visual Studio, we're, we're not sure what parameters should and shouldn't be shown. So what we do is you have to actually put an indication in the ide.host.json. And let me show you where that is in the samples here. So all you have to do is basically define this uh, simple symbol info uh, property here, and it's an array uh, of values here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll say symbol. This is not in the. Wow, it's not in the until sense for some reason. Okay, so this is a another kind of bug here. Um, definitely want to get that one fixed. So I'll be bringing that up with the team, of course. All right, so this is just an array of uh, objects here. So we mm -hmm. give the ID, and you know the ID here is uh, author name, and we'll check this real quick. So ID, author name, mm -hmm. and then the, the name is author name, and then is visible to true. So yeah, that looks all good to me. The schema of declaration looks good too. So I'm not sure what's going on with the IntelliSense here, but that's okay. Let me go ahead and close out of Visual Studio, and then we'll go ahead and rerun that command uh, to get it reset and then reinstalled. Yep, author name. OK, so we'll say um, demo author here, OK? And and uh, we can see that there's just one choice in the target framework. And I don't have the ability to uh, to change that, but you know, if you wanted to, you can definitely go through and and create a template that supports multiple target frameworks. But you know, it's definitely uh, some additional work for those types of templates. Let's take a look at what we get out of here. Let's go ahead and just run this yeah. with Control F5. 
Let me just run it here. All right, so we can see hello from console one created by demo author. It's going to take a look at this, make sure the replacements happen. So we saw that the namespace and then this the string here got replaced with the project name as expected. Nothing. See demo author has been uh, replaced as expected. And then inside the CS proj, uh, that string was replaced also with demo author here. That's so really that cool. is really about it for you know how to create uh, how to create parameters here uh, and then get them to appear you know not only in .NET New but also in Visual Studio. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that I want to kind of point out that that I did point out in the previous video, but let me go ahead and point it out one more time is, you know, let's say if you do want to support something that's more kind of complex, right? Like if you want to create a template that supports more than one target framework, or if you want to create a template that has different types of parameters, right? Like maybe you want a checkbox instead of a text or or stuff like that. The best thing to do is to go take a look at the existing ASP.NET Core templates that have been created by Microsoft here. So this is the repository where all our kind of source templates uh, appear. And most of them that you'll probably be interested in are under project templates. So that's definitely a great resource for how to create, you know, kind of a more kind of complex template. Uh, but yeah, you know, we'll, we'll also kind of cover some some additional kind of info in the uh, in the upcoming video as well. That is exciting. And yeah, that's great. Once again, it seems super easy to be able to continue expanding your template like that. Yeah, so. definitely. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of a grow up story here. You know, we wanted to make it very easy to kind of get started with a basic template, but then also make it kind of easy to uh, to grow that template as well. And, you know, that's kind of what we're doing through these uh, series of videos here. Yeah. Yeah. So what's next? What will be next is, uh, you know, I think what we're going to cover next is uh, kind of troubleshooting and analyzing templates here, you know, so what are the kind of common pitfalls uh, and then what can we do uh, to avoid those and and what's available. So so I created a, a .NET Core tool that that uh, template authors can use uh, to analyze their templates. So I'll show how to install and use that and then uh, go through just kind of the some of the uh, the gotchas there. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like some good stuff to know because mm -hmm. I don't think anyone ever gets it right on the first try, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Sweet. So until then, happy coding. That's it. Thank you.